research as an avenue for curiosity. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to get a couple of definitions out of the way because there are differing types. So the first kind of research is probably the research that we all think about initially. It's gathering data, finding information on a topic that has a solid knowledge base behind it. So this is the kind of research that we would do if you were going on a trip. So finding information on a hotel or uh, museums that you could go to while you're there. There's also, this is also the same type of research that you would do if you were doing a research paper on a historical figure like Thomas Edison. You'd take the time to go check out a book, look at some information on the web, find all of that information. So this is what a lot of us do on a day-to-day -day basis, but what I want to look at is different. So I want to look at research as an active task. It's pursuing new implementations and ideas to further the field you're working in. So this is taking your curiosity and putting it into action. So this can happen in a lot of different fields from biology and communication to psychology and computer science. And this is the kind of research that I love. So I, in addition to being a student here, I've had the opportunity for the past year and a half to work in a lab doing research in machine learning and computer vision. And to give a little bit of context behind what that is, we work with deep neural networks, a form of machine learning, to teach a computer that when we show it a picture of a cat, it should classify it as a cat and not as a dog or a boat or anything in between. So in a broader context, however, I have the opportunity to uh, do meaningful work in and contribute to one of the most relevant and growing fields in, t in today's society. In the past year and a half, after one of my professors saw something in me that I never would have seen in myself, I've had the opportunity to find my passion. I kind of knew it was um, my passion when I started going home and thinking and eating dinner and 20 minutes later I'd pull up my laptop and start working again because I would find a new idea or something else that I wanted to work on because if my experiment's not running, it's broken and there's something I can do to fix it. Or if I have an idea to how better get information out of that experiment I'm running. So I have the opportunity to work with people who are extraordinarily intelligent every day. They help me to understand the theory behind what we're working on and the big picture impact that we, our work is going to have. So I always take the stance of assuming that I'm the dumbest person in the room. But I'm learning to ask more intelligent questions and using my curiosity to drive what we are doing and how to better use that into in furthering the field. So I definitely know more than I did a year ago. I'm more comfortable with the fundamentals. I no longer stumble over the vocabulary that I read every day. And I'm less intimidated, not completely not intimidated, but less intimidated by the mathematically intensive parts of the papers that I read. But the beautiful thing about it is there's always more research being done. So there's always more papers to read, more vocab to stumble over, my favorite. And there's always um, new ideas and avenues to pursue because of this. So the um, difficult part about this is that it's hard. You are never going to have a perfect experiment. You're never going to have an idea. You're always going to have an idea or a project that doesn't work out like you hoped it to. I just got finished working on a project a couple months ago where I'd spent three months trying to get it to work and we were like, I guess it doesn't work at all. So let's move on to the next one. So uh, we do get to learn from this information though. We always are going to learn something from these so-called failures. And it's often these gaps between the expectations and the actual outcomes of what we're learning that provide us with the anomalies in order to ask another question, to push the field further, shift directions, and continue to work. I have a joke with a lot of my friends that it's a 70-30 split. So we spend 70% of our time banging our heads against the wall and trying to understand the theory behind what we're doing, trying to understand why it's not working. But it's that 30% that keeps us going through that. So it's the 30% of crazy success where your experiments are running, you're getting information out of the out of your experiments, the results are good, and it's just that feeling where you get that in the pit of your stomach because it's working. You're getting what you want. So this 30% 
is what keeps me going through the 70%, especially when I pair it with the motivation behind what we're doing. So the pursuance of research is the pursuance of knowledge as an active task. So you're finding out new things and new things that didn't exist before. So we, it, the field itself is inherently competitive. All of the labs are always vying for that next accuracy jump or the next novel idea that's going to change the field. And that's a that's an opportunity. So we get to use these and force collaboration between them as well because all of the authors are always willing to answer your questions. They're always willing to facilitate discussions and they're always interested about your work as well because something that you say may be the anomaly or the spark that hits in their brain that leads them to a new idea. So underneath all of the competition, we are just people who are really curious about what we're working on and we want to do more and want to know more in order to push the boundaries of what we previously thought was possible. Thank you.